Nothing is ours except time. Seneca. Have you ever wondered how you spend this valuable resource? Are you genuinely living your priorities? Every day we are given the gift of time, and it's up to us to determine how we use it. Are you dedicating your time to the things that really matter, such as seeking wisdom, reflective moments, strengthening bonds with loved ones, and developing meaningful projects? Because when we dedicate our time to these areas, everything else in our lives naturally falls into place. We are all aware at our core of the ephemerality of life, but it is only at moments of painful farewell to loved ones that we recognize our fragility in the face of existence. In Stoicism, Seneca instructs us that we often believe that life is brief, when in fact it is not. It seems short because we waste it. Lucius Anu Seneca, Roman statesman and historical philosopher, discovered that if we wish to live a full life, we must be eternal apprentices of the most important subject, life itself. In his moral essay on the brevity of life, Seneca offers us an urgent warning about how we spend the most valuable resource that cannot be replenished, our time. Let's explore Seneca's 10 profound insights into time management, and we invite you to stay until the end to discover how to apply these lessons to your own life, seeking a more meaningful and fulfilling existence. Before we continue with this valuable knowledge, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any valuable knowledge that could transform your life. Number 1. View time as a commodity. You won't find anyone who wants to share their money, but how many share their life? People are cautious when it comes to guarding their personal possessions, but when it comes to wasting time, they tend to be more wasteful with the one thing it's okay to be tight-fisted about. Seneca warns of our negligence in valuing our time, even though it is unquestionably our most valuable and irrecoverable resource. Imagine finding someone extremely rich throwing money away in the street. We would certainly classify them as foolish. However, on a daily basis, we witness ourselves and others wasting something even more valuable, our time. If you want to find out how much of your precious time is wasted, do this simple exercise of considering your time as a financial asset. How much do you think each hour of your day is worth? Would it be $1.60 or maybe $1.100? Now, let's be honest. How many of those hours do you waste on a daily basis? How many hours of your day are spent without purpose? Let's suppose, then, that you spend around three hours a day on unproductive activities, such as futile interactions on social networks or absorbing empty information. In one month, those three hours a day would add up to 90 hours. Your hourly rate is R$1.60. That means you would lose R$1.5400. Imagine if that money was taken out of your bank account every month. Would you accept that without changing anything? So why do we do this with our time, without worrying about living fully, ignoring our own fragility in the face of life? Time is the only thing we can never get back, and the ease with which it can be taken from us is precisely why we must protect it firmly. If we start thinking about our time like this, we can see how to make better decisions. For example, there are series on Netflix that all the seasons combined would give you more than two months of your life. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with taking the time to watch something you like, but as long as you do it consciously, rethink how you're going to spend this valuable asset. Number two, stop procrastinating and act immediately. Take on the task of the day, and you won't have to depend so much on tomorrow's tasks. As we procrastinate, life speeds up. Seneca says, first comes laziness and then procrastination. Lazy people never do what they have to do for various reasons. It's too difficult, it takes too long. They lack the will. Procrastinators simply put it off. They tell themselves, I'll do it, but not now. I'll find time at the end of the week. This applies to many of us. We worry about accomplishing important tasks, often distressed by anxiety. So we rationalize procrastination imagining perfect scenarios in which our future selves will surely complete the task. But let's be honest, deep down we know that this I will find another excuse to put off these tasks. Seneca warns us that we should always remember that the habit of procrastinating not only increases the likelihood of not accomplishing the task, but we are also subject to life's interruptions. However, we can't count ourselves lucky to always have tomorrow to put off again. If you want to make the most of your time, Eliminate the phrase, I'll do it later, and start using, I'll do it now. 
Understand the power of the deadline. Create a simple list of your dreams and goals with real deadlines for achieving them. Cultivate the habit of reflecting on your day and evaluating how you used your time. If you don't set aside time, even just 10 minutes a day for honest self-analysis, you're bound to make the same mistakes again. This way you'll know exactly where you need to improve and it will be much easier to chart your path towards the person you want to be. Always remember that while we waste time hesitating and procrastinating, life goes on. Think about how many projects you've put off and never done. It could be something from days, weeks or even years ago. Sometimes we don't fail in the process, we fail because we never start. Stop procrastinating and act immediately. Number three, live for yourself. Seneca never said, don't judge someone as having lived long because of wrinkles and gray hair. He didn't live long, he just existed for a long time. We all want things in life, whether it's a dream job, a dream house, an ideal relationship or a perfect vacation. Most of us fall short of achieving many of these aspirations because we're stuck in obnoxious jobs just to pay the bills or with partners we cling to for fear of loneliness. You are simply being driven and influenced by all the influences around you in a world where we are constantly bombarded by external stimuli and information. We deceive ourselves by saying we don't have time to try new activities. Being busy is always a choice. Being busy with things we hate is the biggest distraction in life. We routinely spend our days attending to our obligations, but being absent from ourselves, confusing doing with being. The best way to invest your time is to invest it in creating a life you love. If you don't know what you love or what you want, ask yourself these questions. If I had more time, what would I do? If I could change something about myself or my life right now, what would it be? Perhaps you realize that you want to change jobs, improve your physical fitness or explore a new hobby. When we stop the noise outside and start to look inside ourselves and ask these questions, that's when we really start to see our genuine desires. Just like children, we will discover what deeply interests us. Another vital aspect of starting to live for yourself is learning to say no. Saying no is one of the hardest things to do in life. With no comes the fear of disappointing the people we love and the desire to please everyone. However, if you're not careful, these are the impositions that will overwhelm and consume your life. Have you ever wondered how you can reclaim some of your time or feel less busy? Start by learning the power of no, saying no, thank you, and refusing to get involved. And no, I can't right now. It can hurt feelings and push people away. But the more you say no to things that don't matter, the more you can say yes to what's good for you. This will allow you to live and enjoy your life to the full. The longer you wait to make changes, the more time you'll waste occupied with other people's priorities. And although you may hurt other people's feelings when you say no, in time they will realize that it's not something personal against them, but that you are determined in your actions. From the moment you tell your friends and family that your time is important, they will start to respect you and your time more for having shown them that. Number four, don't waste your time preparing for the future. According to Seneca, those who devote all their time to their own needs, who plan each day as if it were their last. Don't worry about tomorrow. We are all guilty of spending too much of our time preparing for the future. Seneca encourages us to live in the present because it is the only time we have control over. Don't postpone your joy. Don't believe that your happiness lies ahead. He criticizes those who think they can work hard until around 60 when they can finally retire and then be happy. Our future is uncertain and out of our control. The future life you are striving for may never happen. We are so busy and preoccupied with the future that we often let the present slip away, allowing time to pass unnoticed and unchecked. And then, when we are old and approaching the end of our lives, we finally realize how short and valuable life is. Seneca didn't think this way to discourage us, but so that he could make the most of the time he had. The regret is that we didn't make the most of it when we had the chance, to illustrate this, just read the headstones on the coffins in the cemetery. Nobody regrets money or lost opportunities, but rather the time they didn't spend. Seneca compares time to a flowing stream, which will not always continue. If you were in the middle of a desert dying of thirst and came across a stream of water, but didn't know when it would run dry, wouldn't you drink as much as you could? In the same way, we should make the most of our time to enjoy the present. 
Planning your next 30, 40, 50 years and beyond is important, but don't let them steal your most valuable present. Just thinking about the future stops you. It leaves you stagnant in the present and shows no sign of progress or of using it. The funny thing is, the future can only be shaped by your action in the present. You can only live one moment at a time. Enjoy this moment now. Number five, make long-term rewards seem immediate. According to Seneca, putting things off is the biggest waste of time. It takes the value out of each day and deprives us of the present by promising tomorrow. The greatest challenge in life is waiting. Our tendency to procrastinate is stronger. At the start of work, even if all distractions have been removed and you're ready to start at eight o'clock as you planned, your brain is still inclined to look for a reason to do something easier. The difficulty lies in making the start less uncomfortable. The secret here is waiting. It's what we crave when we want to procrastinate something we know is beneficial. It's the difference between immediate impulses and a long-term reward. The reason why starting something is often difficult is the absence of an immediate reward. Sometimes the reward is years away. However, if you connect the work to the prospect of an immediate reward, you'll have an incentive to get started. For example, if you put off using Instagram, Twitter, or any other social network, you can commit to not accessing them until you've completed a specific amount of work. In this way, you reward hard work with something immediate. Take some time to look at your past. Seneca reminds us that life is short and precious to those who neglect the past, ignore the present and fear the future. For Seneca, time is divided into three parts, the present, which is transitory, the future, which is uncertain, and the past, which is immutable. While modern approaches to time management instruct us to focus on the present, neglecting the future, Seneca advises us to pay attention to our past in order to enrich our existence. We must cultivate enough self-awareness to extract valuable lessons from our past experiences, making us more effective in the present. When you take a moment to stop and reflect, to understand what has shaped your character and what has truly contributed to the person you are today, it becomes enlightening. It helps us to be fully present and understand the transformations taking place within us. It also provides a clear and focused vision of who we are today and who we want to be tomorrow. It also helps us to take responsibility for ourselves and our actions. Sometimes it can be difficult to realize how far we have come, especially when we compare ourselves to others. However, taking time to reflect on the past offers the opportunity to see the progress we have made in life. Take that time and leave it only for learning what is needed now in the present. Because what we catch ourselves doing now is regretting the past and trembling about the future. Even more so with the use of social networks, we become more anxious and depressed. The past holds you back and the future stops you. Seneca and other Stoics like Marcus Aurelius knew that this could be a problem, and they knew very well how to control these emotions in order to live well in the present. For this, we've left a link in the first comment to help you get rid of these bad feelings and live a virtuous life like the Stoics. Take a look. Number six, make the most of your free time. As Seneca teaches us, the problem is not a lack of time, but the bad use we make of it. Life provides us with plenty of time, as long as we know how to use it well. We all strive to earn two things, money and leisure time. We work between eight and nine hours a day to secure these free moments, but we often waste them on trivial activities. As some people point out, we need to say, enough is enough, and stop squandering these precious leisure hours, even if we enjoy our daily work. Keep the time devoted to work to a minimum, because these extra hours cannot be recovered. They are lost forever. Many of us use our lunch break to eat at our desk and produce more, when instead we could make the most of it by reading, writing, or exercising. If you work in a city, you could visit a museum or gallery, or even start a stoic study group in the workplace, which could meet during lunch, at weekends, or in the evenings. When you have free time, use it productively by meditating, reading, exercising, or keeping a diary, or any activity that adds value to your life. If you want to break away from mediocrity and start really living, it's crucial to make the most of your free time. You may think that you don't have time for this, but if you look deep inside yourself, you'll know that there is time, even if it's only a little. If you have 30 minutes to spare and want to practice a musical instrument, set aside 30 minutes a day for that. During that time, focus only on that. 
Leave your cell phone in another room on silent mode and use those 30 minutes just to learn that new instrument. You'll see that if you make the most of every second, it will make a huge difference to your life. Number seven, avoid wasting time on everyday trivialities. As Seneca taught us, if people want to understand how short their lives are, let them consider how limited their time is. We are all guilty of wasting too much of our time on futility. Nowadays, it's increasingly common to see our time consumed by screens, whether at work or on social media, as we scroll through status updates and post countless photos in order to receive external approval. How often do we find ourselves dedicating our time to other people in search of insignificant financial or social rewards? Playing a game without merit on a mobile device is actually wasting time that we could be using to develop valuable skills, exercise or enrich our lives with literature, art or music. The same principle applies to social media. Like other forms of entertainment, social media is designed to consume your time. If people came up to you all day asking for $1.20, you would send them away. But when people constantly approach you, whether in person, by phone, email or SMS, seeking your time, you give in without question, considering your time less valuable than your money. Those who repeatedly say yes to other people's requests end up realizing that they no longer have time for themselves, living according to other people's demands instead of their own aspirations. True satisfaction lies in filling your time with meaningful and enriching activities aligned with your personal vision of life. Seneca said, expecting is the greatest impediment to living. In anticipation of tomorrow, it loses today. In other words, we are willing to postpone our lives through trivialities that we say yes to. This is actually a lie because we're not postponing, we're giving our time without ever receiving it back. Marcus Aurelius used to say to always ask yourself if what you have in front of you is essential. He said, because most of what we say and do is not essential. Ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? So don't waste time on trivialities. Number eight, devote your time to philosophy. Seneca claimed that philosophy is the only universal vocation, an occupation shared by everyone. While other careers are determined by birth, abilities, education or wealth, philosophy is accessible to everyone. Seneca believed that everyone could be enriched by philosophy. Many people use their profession as a justification to avoid getting involved in philosophy. They think that philosophy has no practical use in their lives or that they don't have enough time to devote to it. Seneca argues that we should not allow our occupations to prevent us from seeking philosophical wisdom because philosophy is intrinsically linked to everything we do. The Stoics considered philosophy to be the only truly noble career for human beings because it applies to all other professions. Instead of believing that there is no time for philosophy, see philosophy as an essential component of your life. Reflect on how philosophy can enhance your existence and how you can become a better philosopher. Just as the gym and sports improve the body, philosophy improves the mind. It makes us wiser in our decision-making and more reflective in the quality of our choices. If you've come this far, it's because this video has made you reflect, think and associate actions that you can take in future situations. You've probably even thought at some point, I wish I'd learned that before. So dedicate some time each day to philosophy. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you'll receive valuable knowledge of Stoic philosophy on a daily basis. Number 9. Face what's new. One of the biggest challenges to making good use of our time is the fear of the unexplored. Seneca argues, we're not afraid to make choices because bad things happen, but bad things happen because we're afraid to make choices. When we look at the past, we can often relate the consequences of our actions to decisions made previously. So instead of adhering to the notion that what we do today doesn't affect the future, recognize that the actions of the present impact the future. Many people fear change because the future is uncertain. Change can seem frightening because of the uncertainty. However, as Seneca taught us, we shouldn't fear the unknown, but embrace it. Fear of the unknown is often a major obstacle to success. It is often fear of the unknown that prevents us from making decisions that could improve our lives. We prefer to stay where we are, even if we're dissatisfied, because we're used to it. It's familiar and comfortable. We fear change because we don't know what the future holds. However, in order to progress and achieve our goals, we often have to deal with what we don't know. Don't let the fear of choices paralyze you. Be bold and don't be afraid to take risks. 
The unknown should not be an obstacle to success. Instead, it can be an opportunity to grow and become a better person. Fear in our minds is just a barrier to staying in our comfort zone. As we said earlier today, we suffer more in the imagination than in reality. Number 10. Set your own standards of success. In today's society, we are often judged on external standards of success, such as the amount of money we make, the car we drive, or even the size of the house we live in. Many shape their lives according to these criteria, believing that by meeting them, they will achieve genuine happiness. Seneca warns us about the dangers of blindly following these standards. He encourages us to determine our own criteria for success rather than accepting those that society imposes on us. Instead of measuring your success by the money you have acquired or the goods you own, measure it by the extent to which you live according to your own principles and values. Measure your success by the quality of your interpersonal relationships and the authenticity of your existence. Set your own standards of success and don't let society dictate your definition of success. The key to a meaningful life lies in living in line with your own values and principles rather than blindly following the success criteria imposed by others. Seneca's teachings on time management are timeless and provide valuable insights into how to make the best use of the time we have. By valuing time, avoiding procrastination, prioritizing personal well-being, not spending time on trivialities, dedicating yourself to philosophy and setting your own standards for success, you can achieve a richer and fuller life. Remember that time is limited, and as Seneca taught us, it's not that we have little time, but that we waste it. So use your time wisely and seek a life that is truly meaningful to you. That meaningful life can be found in one of the 12 Stoic lessons that can immediately change your life. Click on the screen and take a look right now.